Shalom, and welcome to this week's Bible study. Uh, this week we'll be speaking about um, faith without works is dead, and uh, we'll get into that in a little while. And first we'll go ahead and sing our song, and today we'll be singing Trust and Obey. So I'll bring that up now.
Okay, and so today we'll be speaking about faith without works is dead and what that means. And um, we'll go ahead and pray and then we'll get into the lesson. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for your word and all your blessings. We pray that you will uh, teach us your word and help us to understand it. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so first we'll go over to James uh, 2, uh, 19 through 26. It says, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only, Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So we show our faith by our works. We walk because we have faith, because we do believe in Jesus. And, um, you know, Abraham believed God. Offered, uh, went to offer Isaac on the altar as God commanded, and then God stopped him, so he didn't. And because of that, he was called the friend of God. Now, Jesus is God in the flesh, as we know. And when he was on the earth, he told his disciples, If ye love me, keep my commandments. Our obedience is our proof of our love to God. Okay, that's how we prove all of the God and prove that we believe in him is we obey him. And as I have preached many times to truly believe in Christ, you have to commit to fully obeying him because the word believe in John three sixteen and Romans 10, 19 and all those salvation verses, the word believe roots back to a word that means to yield and obey. It also means to continue. Um, so you... Someone who falls falls away, they were never saved. You go back to the parable of the sower, you had the ones that fell away, and they were not saved. The only one that was saved was the one that endured and continued. Okay, and the Bible also says that he that endures to the end shall be saved, and that's um, uh, the people who... They believe the facts about Jesus, and the the kind the other ones that are either on the thorny or rocky soil, uh, they didn't fully commit, but they believe and they're trying. Um, as long as they keep trying and they're faithful to death, they will make it to heaven. Revelation chapter five uh, shows that, um, and and uh, I think it's chapter five. It says where. Well, you know, people die for Christ and then he leads them to fountains of living water after death. Well, fountains of living water is salvation. You also have the church, uh, one of the church ages where he said that if they endured to the end, if they endured persecution, if they were faithful unto death, then he would give them the crown of life. And to him that overcometh, he would not be hurt of the second death. The only way that you can be hurt of the second death is to not truly be saved. So you have examples in the Bible where there were Christians who were not truly there were there were people who were not truly saved they were not indwelt and sealed with the holy spirit they were they believed in jesus and but they had not fully committed and fully surrendered and so therefore they, they were like the ones on the thorny ground or on the rocky soil but to where they had not fully committed but if they were faithful to death then that would show the full commitment and they would be saved after that um and uh if you go uh james 1 22 through 27 uh wait a minute let me find that james 1 22 through 27 says but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves so if you don't do the word if you do not obey the word if you only hear it and be like, yeah, I believe that. You just believe the facts, then you're deceiving yourself. You're not saved. 
Okay, you have to obey. You have to do the word. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man, like unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, and continueth therein. So you have to continue serving god you can't fall away if you fall away then for one you've never been saved and for another um, you know you're not enduring to the end so you're not going to be saved because someone who's truly saved cannot fall away <coughs> and um so it says in 25 but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work this man shall be blessed in his deed if any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. So, people who have filthy mouths, constantly saying filthy words and stuff, they're not saved. It just said that. It says that right there in James one twenty six. If they do not bridle their tongue, they have deceived themselves, and their religion is in vain, and vain means empty, and if your religion is empty, you're not going to get you to heaven. Okay, so, um, you know, and then uh, 27 says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the womb. So you have to help people, you have to help the fatherless, help the widows, and, and you have, and it says here, to keep himself, keep himself unspotted from the world doesn't just put it on the holy spirit oh the holy spirit will just keep you uh, no no we keep ourselves too it says that right there we have to keep ourselves unspotted from the world pure religion we keep ourselves unspotted from the world it's not just the holy spirit magically doing everything that, that's not what happens because if that's what happens then my goodness once we got saved we lose our sin nature fully we'd never do anything wrong again I mean, that's not, no. It says we keep ourselves unspotted from the world. So that's an important thing there. And um, then you have, let's see, Revelation seven fourteen. Says, uh, Okay, and uh, now another thing is not uh, the Bible actually makes it very clear of revelation through all the seven church ages. You look at the church ages in Revelation. Only one of the churches is promised to escape the Great Tribulation. Now the seven churches in Revelation, yes, they are church ages of what the how the church has been throughout history. But every single individual Christian fits into one of those categories. And if you do not fit into Philadelphia, you are going to go through the Great Tribulation. How exactly God is going to protect those who are worthy as Philadelphians to escape the Tribulation, you know, I'm not 100% sure. Um, you have, well, the woman flees into the wilderness. That could be that God protects them somehow through he moves them someplace and yeah and still on the earth and protects them through it maybe he raptures them maybe he raptures them to heaven um i'm not sure but the bible makes it very plain that many many churches are going to go through the tribulation it's in there because you have right here in revelation seven fourteen, uh it says and i said unto him sir uh, it says in 13, And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So, you know, we have to do action to be saved. We have, it says that these people, they actually go through the Great Tribulation, and they have to wash their robes and make them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now, a true, now, the Bible wants to keep yourself unspotted from the world, keep your garments unspotted from the world. 
if you are not faithful, you're not going to be protected from the great tribulation. Um, you're, you're not, he's not going to rapture an impure bride. It's not happening because you look at the seven churches in Revelation. It actually says in a few of them that they are going to go. It, it says it very plainly that Thyatira Ty is absolutely going through the tribulation. And, and these people are saved because it says so. Um, so we'll walk through them in order. You've got Pergamos first in Revelation 2, 12 through 16. So first off, you got Revelation 2, 12 through 16. And this is Pergamos. It says, And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy walks, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou hast holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faith a martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Now, when does Jesus come and fight against people with the sword of his mouth? That happens in the at the end of Revelation when he has his second return. So these people aren't raptured. He's saying that if they do not repent from their uh, bell worship, Okay, now this is the Catholic Church. Those who are, have affinity with the Catholic Church, they partake of the Mass, thinking it's the same thing as the Lord's Supper. They think that the Pope is an actual religious person that should be respected. These people have, uh, they have, uh, they're involved with Rome. They're involved with the Catholic Church. They're involved in the doctrine of Balaam. They have the, these people are going to go through the tribulation because he's going to come and fight against them with the sword of his mouth. That doesn't happen until his actual that that happens at the second coming. Okay, that's that's after the tribulation. He's actually fighting against them. So there's actually people who all at least claim to be Christians who's actually going to be fighting against Jesus when he comes. With the ten thousands of his saints, with you know, when he comes with, uh, you know, the all of us and the saints and angels and everybody, and he comes to set up his earthly kingdom, there's actually going to be people fighting against him in this church of Pergamos. They're not being raptured. They're not being protected through the tribulation. They're still. They're going to actually be fighting against Christ when he comes back. That's what it says. You want to argue about it, go argue with God. That's what it says. Okay, these people are actually going to be fighting against Christ when he comes back. And they claim to be Christians. Um, so, they're all, you know, um, so there are those who will, uh, in Pergamos, that, you know, if a, if someone is a Pergamos Christian, they're, act, they're going to be so blinded, they're not going to recognize Jesus when he comes. They're going to think he's an alien. They're going to think it's an alien invasion and going to be out there trying to fight against him in the Battle of Armageddon. They're going to be so blinded that they're not even going to recognize Christ when he comes. And they're definitely not going to be going in the rapture, you know, beforehand and, and skipping out on the tribulation. They're going to go through it. Um... Okay, uh, so you've got those ones. Now, these people are probably those who are not actually truly indwelled with the Holy Spirit. They, It sounds like they're the ones that were like on the rocky or, or thorny soil and, you know, they are so blinded they fell away and they didn't even recognize Christ when he's coming back and he's going to fight against him with his sword. I, I think they're going to end up in hell, honestly. Um, I don't think these people are truly saved, but yet they're in the church. 
And it's actually a whole church because he's saying that this church is this is going to, or it says that he had, there are those in the church. So the church needs to cast them out because of the false doctrines. Uh, and churches don't do that anymore. So this could be a lot of churches today. You know, um, if the churches are not diligent to throw these people out, is you know, they very well could uh, have to go through the tribulation to make their robes white. To purify themselves. It's a purging and purifying for disobedient Christians. Um, the Bible says that God chastens us so that we are not condemned with the world. But if we don't respond to that chasing, what's he going to do? Well, he's going to put us through the same judgment that the world goes through. And it says that even further in... Uh, th okay, the next one is... Um, Revelation 2, 18 through 25, this is Thyatira, and it says that absolutely that they will go through the tribulation. So this one, Revelation 2, 18 through 25, says, And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds, and I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and the hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. This is in the great tribulation. He says that, be, that in that there's going to be churches in the great tribulation. It says that when he throws these people into a bed and Jezebel into a bed into great tribulation, that the churches shall know. Well, if they were raptured, they would have already known. Okay, there are churches, there are Christians who are going to go through the great tribulation. They're going to suffer through it because they are not pure. They're not pure. If you're not pure, you're going through the great tribulation. And, you know, again, this is has to do with the Catholic Church, the great whore of Revelation 17. This has to do with eating things, sacrifice to idols. This is the mass. Go watch the video that I did last year on the Lord's Supper and explains the difference between the Lord's Supper and the Mass. The Mass is, the Catholic Church and the Mass is idolatry. It is ancient bell worship. This is what they are doing, and God says that it is adultery, and he says that she, that uh, those who commit adultery, so these are saved people. These are saved people. These are saved people. You cannot commit adultery against Christ unless you are betrothed to him. And a betrothal is a lot more different than a engagement. I don't know where the modern idea of engagement came from because when, when it comes to the Christian life, it is based on the ancient betrothal. It is a legal contract. You are bound by laws. It, it is, there is a, there's a legal transaction that happens at the betrothal, and you cannot just decide that you're not going to marry the person. You're stuck. The only way that you can decide not to marry them, you have to go back to court, because to be betrothed, you had to go to court and sign papers, and there had to be witnesses saying that the marriage would be right, and they, and there was, it was a big thing. It was not just some guy giving the girl a ring, and then two weeks later, the girl's like, oh, I don't want to marry you. Uh, no, no, that didn't happen. This was, a, this was a huge legal thing, and this is what the Christian, that's what salvation is based on. Okay, salvation, we are betrothed to Christ. We can't just decide, oh, I'm not going to marry him, I'm going to go live for the world. Uh, no, once we're truly saved, and we're in dwell, we, uh, we're stuck. You know, um, 
he he throws them. They commit adultery against him. If we turn that that spiritual adultery, and under Old Testament law, any kind of adultery was death. So he then sends them to the uh, tribulation in order to purify them. So they make their ro- they make their robes white in the blood of the lamb. They make their robes white. This is not. It's not. You believe the facts about Jesus, the Holy Spirit just comes in and cleans you up and life is hunky-dory and easy. No. You have got to... There is work involved. There is work involved. The Holy Spirit makes it possible for us to overcome sin. He doesn't just magically come in and take all the sin away and, and, and we don't magically just can do whatever we want to and we're not going to get in trouble for it. That That's not in the Bible. Christians who are not pure are going to go through the tribulation. Okay? So, the church at Thyatira, it absolutely says they go through the tribulation with the great horn of revelation. We know that that's the wrath and everything. I mean, they go through great tribulation. They're in trouble with God. They suffer. And they make the robes white. They do make the robes white because they're same, so they can't completely fall away. Um, and so they come through it, but they had to be purged. They had to be purified. They just having Jesus in your heart, just having the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, does not mean that you are pure, and does not mean that you are worthy enough to escape the tribulation. Because if you look over here, this is a very important thing. Jesus told his disciples, Watch and pray that ye may be counted worthy to escape all these things coming on the earth. And he had just spoken about the great tribulation. If just being saved was going to cause you to escape the great tribulation, why did he tell his disciples to watch and pray so that they could be counted worthy to escape. He didn't say be saved. He said watch and pray. That's work. Watching is work. Praying is work too. I mean, have you ever tried to pray for an hour? That's work. Have you ever tried to pray all night long? That is work. <coughs> okay, because the flesh don't want to do that. And you have to fight the flesh and the devil from all these uh, things trying to come to your mind and, and, and distract you. And it's it's work. And it's and sometimes it's a battle. It's like war. Um, that's not you know. Watch and pray. And that verse is in. I will find that. Let's see. Yeah, it's in Matthew, but it's also in Luke. Some people believe that up until a certain point in Matthew. It has nothing to do with the church, and so we're supposed to um, uh, do away with it. So I always try to, Luke also has it. I always try to find it in another place uh, to show that that this is for us. So Luke 21, 36, hey, you know, Luke 21, you can go read that chapter. And um, you can tell from, like, verses 20... Uh, through, I mean, you got 31, so likewise, when you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I said, 32, verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. 33 says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Okay, and then, uh, Luke, and, and you keep reading, you can tell that he's speaking of the great tribulation. Um, it says 30 in verse 36, it says, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. And in the daytime, okay, so if you go back to uh, 34, so this is going to, this is Luke 21 34, it's uh, through. Um, 36 here, the whole thing says, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, 
And so that day come upon you unawares. See, they're not watching. They're too busy with everything else. And they're not watching and praying. And so it would come upon them unawares. For And then 35 says, For as a snail shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Okay? So, we have to watch and pray to escape the tribulation. You know, you we have to watch and pray to escape. We have to be accounted worthy. Just being saved does not make us worthy to escape the tribulation. That's not in the Bible. That is a lie from the pits of hell. And I believe that, yeah, I believe a great falling away has happened from pure doctrine, but I believe a worse falling away is going to happen in the tribulation when you've got a bunch of backslidden, unpure, impure Christians who are going to suffer through it, and they're going to fall away in droves because the Bible says in Revelation that when they're being tortured in the great tribulation, they're suffering, that they curse God and they don't repent. And I honestly believe that that is going to be a bunch of people who claim to be Christians and they're having to go through the tribulation because they were not pure. They were not counted worthy to escape and they didn't understand the Bible and they're going to suffer. And, um, because, I mean, Revelation says that, uh, Revelation just absolutely says that uh, Thyra Tyra is going to go through the Great Tribulation. They're going to go through the Tribulation. If they, someone who is involved with Roman, the Catholic Church, who thinks that they're Christians, who thinks that they're saved, who thinks that, uh, who has, who partakes with the Mass, they, their friendship with Rome, they are going to go through the Great Tribulation to become purified. They have committed adultery against Christ and they're going through the Great Tribulation. That was with Pergamus and Thyatira. And Thyatira just put it out there extremely plain. Pergamus, you have to kind of look at that a little bit. Because it says he'll fight with them against him with the sword of his mouth. Well, that happens at the end when he comes back. So, if he's fighting against them, they weren't taken in the rapture. They, they, or the, you know, they were in the Tribulation. They went through it. Um... And, you know, I'm not too sure when the rapture... I believe that the rapture is dependent on whether or not the whole church is um, pure or not. Um, you know, and, but there's some things here that do indicate that... Because it says, watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape. This could be speaking of a partial rapture. Those who are worthy are taken and those who are not worthy are left. To be purified because Christ is not going to marry an impure bride. It's not happening. Okay, he is not going to marry an unfaithful bride. If they haven't been faithful, they're not going. And whether or not they are actually raptured to heaven, raptured to the New Jerusalem, or put someplace on the earth where they're protected... I'm not 100% sure there's different uh, verses in the Bible that shows different things. Um, because the ones that the pre-trib rapture uses down for, uh, in First Thessalonians, it says that, you know, he will come with a shout and the voice of the archangel and will be taken. Um, that actually looks like it may be at the end because it, it doesn't actually say that the rapture to heaven it looks more like they, and other people have noticed there's a lot of military uh, words in that with the trumpets and everything. And it's more like when a uh, great ruler was coming to visit and the people go out to meet him and then bring him into the city. So it could be that we go up and then come right back down. Uh, and Jesus goes uh, in, and, and we escort Jesus into Jerusalem and he sets up his kingdom. Now, if that's the way it's going to happen, then it could be that the Christians who are worthy to escape are taken someplace else on the earth to protect them from the tribulation. And they're not raptured to heaven, but they're taken 
to some place on the earth and protect it because you do have the woman fleeing into the wilderness and the devil is still chasing her. That could be the church. A lot of people think it's Israel. Israel's not saved. They're not right with God. I, uh, when you're looking at that, it says, um, if you go to Revelation chapter 12, it actually makes it clear that it's the church and not Israel there. Because, um, let me go over there. Let me go ahead and get over to Revelation 12. It actually shows that that is the church. It is not Israel. Um, okay, let's see. So, you come down here to 12... Six and the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed to her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was one heaven, um Okay, so a place prepared of God, that sounds like the New Jerusalem. Um and you know, the only saved people is going to the New Jerusalem. That would be the church, not not Israel, not Israel that's not saved. Um, Jews who are saved and pure, yes, they would go. But as far as the whole nation of Israel, when they're not saved and they were, they've rejected Christ, um, they're not the ones going. And it makes it plain that the devil is still after her and everything. And, um, And so it says, because 13 says, And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman, which brought forth a man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman. So she's on the earth. This looks like it is the church. <laughs> and that God puts a, the church someplace, the church that is worthy to escape, he puts them someplace. He somehow protects them through the tribulation. Okay? He protects them. They're on the earth, and he protects them as they go through the tribulation. But the devil is still coming after them. But then the earth helps the woman and swallows up the flood. And that flood, there would be a flood of people, like an army or something, trying to come after them. This is the church. It's not Israel. Okay, because if you go back to Daniel, Israel could actually end up being wiped off the face of the earth again as a nation. The beast may actually cause the land of Israel to become desolate again if Israel does not turn to Christ. Okay, things are dependent on whether or not people obey God or not. If Israel turns to Christ, then Christ will come back at the battle of Armageddon and prevent Israel from being destroyed and overtaken and he will save them. If they do not repent, Daniel chapter 12 makes it very plain that the beast would cause the land of Israel to become desolate again. Okay? So, let me go find that in uh, Daniel. So, if you wake up one day and Israel is surrounded by armies and Jesus doesn't come back to save them, well, for one thing, uh, know that it, the tribulation is healed. Um, and hope and pray that God somehow protects you through it, because just because you're still here and not raptured, well, maybe we misunderstood the rapture. Maybe he's going to protect us through it. If you end up, you know, we've got to be diligent, watching, praying, and walking to make sure that we are counted worthy to escape the Great Tribulation. And if you're not found worthy, just stay faithful to God, stay faithful to death, so at least you make it to heaven. Um, because it's going to be really bad. And if, uh, you go over here to Daniel, not 12, it's 7, I think. It's a, no, it's 12. Maybe it's 9. It's 927. It's Daniel 927. That's what it is. Okay, so Daniel 927, it's talking about the beast. Okay? And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured up on the desolate. 
Okay, so after the beast takes power, he's going to, okay, so he's going to confirm the covenant with many for one week. And then in the midst of the week, he is going to cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And then he is going to wage war on Israel and make the land desolate again. It's right there. And it's going to be desolate even until the consummation. That means it's going to be desolate until Jesus Christ physically comes back and sets up his earthly kingdom. Israel will be desolate. The prophecies of Armageddon will it's surrounded by well, Israel is surrounded by armies and Jesus comes and rescues Israel from this. That is only if Israel turns to Christ. If they don't turn to Christ, they are in a lot of trouble. It's going to become desolate again. Okay, these things are in the Bible. This doctrine that I was raised with will, you know, of exactly, you know, they were like, well, this is exactly how the end times is going to happen. You know, uh, the whole church, as long as you've, uh, as you know, you're saved. First of all, they was like, well, you're saved as long as you believe in Jesus and ask him to your heart and ask forgiveness of your sins. You're saved. And if you're saved, you're going to be taken in the rapture before any bad thing happens. Before the tribulation, you're going to totally escape and be taken in the rapture. And then in the tribulation, God's going to save Israel from being made desolate again because he's going to come back and he's going to, at the battle of Armageddon, he's going to um, <coughs> destroy all of Israel's enemies and save them <coughs> from becoming desolate. Uh, that's one scenario. That's if everybody, that's if the church is pure. That's if Israel turns to Christ during the, at the start of the battle of Armageddon. That's in that scenario. If the church is not pure, they are not escaping. If Israel does not turn to Christ, they will become desolate again. Unfortunately, that's what the Bible says. That is what the Bible says. If they do not turn to Christ, they will become desolate again. Until Christ comes back. And guess what? The tribulation is probably starting in about two or three weeks. On September 18th through 19th, the UN is confirming a seven-year covenant with many different nations concerning uh, the uh, e um, environmental stuff and the uh, global sustainability. They are confirming a seven-year covenant. It's coming in a few weeks. Okay, so Jesus is going to come back. The rapture is going to happen anytime within the next two to three weeks to eight years. Because he actually end is actually in eight years. There's a seven year tribulation. Okay. The tribulation is a full seven years. So in that the beginning of the eighth year, Jesus would then come back and set up his kingdom. It's a full seven years. A lot of people didn't don't get that. And I didn't get that till the other day. I was like, oh, okay, it's actually okay. He's not coming back in the seventh year. He's coming back at the beginning of the eighth year, which is a lot of people think it's around the face of Trumpets because the trumpet blows and, you know, um, there's a lot of symbolism there. Um, so, uh, and the day, the face of Trumpets, no man knows the day or the hour of when that actually is because um, of the times and stuff. And uh, so it, when Jesus said that no man knew the day or the hour, he was, they, you know, it looks like he was referring to that. It's very possible. Um, so, and with all calendars being messed up and not on right track anyway, you know, when is the actual, you know, all calendars are probably not right about when the actual feast, so you can't go, okay, in eight years, Jesus comes back on the Feast of Tabernacles, so we're going to do, uh, this day in 2031. Well, that may not work, because when is the actual Feast of Tabernacles? All calendars are really messed up from, I mean, they're like 50 years off for one thing. So, we can't narrow down the day or the hour, but we can't, we can know, hey, you know, it, <laughs> Jesus is probably coming back within the next, you know, few, you know, it said day or hour, but Jesus said that we would know the time. Um, so, 
if this is if this is the covenant prophesied in Daniel, then the return of Christ the would happen. It looks like the return of Christ would happen in twenty thirty one sometime. And so when it when the rapture happens and exactly what that is and how God protects the ones who are worthy through the tribulation that can happen any time within the ne between now because we're just a few weeks before that covenant so it can happen any time from right now to probably the first the end of the first three and a half years because the end of the three and a half years is when the wrath happens and the woman actually flees into the wilderness at that last three and a half years so that's a very possible real possibility there um but you have to be worthy to escape and just being saved does not make you worthy you know we have to keep ourselves unspotted from the world we have to be pure and if we're not pure we are going to go through the great tribulation you know and so um you know, Pergamus, we did Pergamus, and we did Thyatira. I mean, look at Laodicea. Laodicea, three, they're not going to be raptured to heaven. Laodicea, look at Revelation three fourteen through 20. Revelation, I mean, you know, Laodicea is not going to uh, escape the tribulation. So if we go, whoops, wait a minute. Okay, so if we go to Revelation 3, 14 through 20, it says, And unto the church of Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou art cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. They're, they don't even have a robe. Their robes don't need to be clean. They don't have one. I mean, it says they're naked. Uh, I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with ice have, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chase and be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He's going to, he, he spews glory to see it out of his mouth. Laodicea is not escaping the tribulation. So that means most of the church, since we're in the Laodicean church age, well, the majority of churches is Laodiceans. They're rich and increasing with goods, have need of nothing. But yet they're as wicked as the devil and they commit adultery and they uh, get drunk and they'll, they'll got their eyes on the riches and things of the world. What did Jesus say? Don't become so consumed with drunkenness and things of this life <clears throat> to where you miss the rapture you miss that the rapture and then he says watch and pray that ye are kind of worthy to escape you don't want to miss it if you miss it you going you're going through the tribulation okay laodicea is not going to be raptured they're not going to be protected they're going to suffer through the tribulation because they weren't watching and praying. They had their minds on their wealth and on their everything else. And on, on their fun. And they thought that God was just their buddy. God's not your buddy. God is your God. He is your master. He is your authority. Yes, he can be your friend. But you have to obey him. He's not your buddy. Just like a parent is not supposed to be their child's buddy either. You're their authority. You're not their buddy. You can be their friend, but you have to maintain that authority. And God does that. He's not our buddy. Okay. Um, 
yeah, you know, this, <coughs> so there's a lot of, and even true Christians are going, like, people who are truly saved, <coughs> they're going to go through the tribulation. They're, they're going to, they haven't kept themselves unspotted. They haven't, they've got things in their lives, and God's like, no, I am not taking you because you are impure. You're going to be purged. I have to purge you. I have to purify you. Okay, and then um, those three other churches where it's, it doesn't really say if they go through the tribute. It's kind of vague. Um, it's not as for, straightforward as the other ones. You have uh, Ephesus and 2 1 really doesn't mention the tribulation at all. Um, so, Revel so Ephesus and Revelation 2 1 through 5. Let's see. Revelation 2, 1 through 5, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. So it does, so remember at the end he says, Behold, I come quickly. He's always saying, Behold, I come quickly. He's saying, I'm going to come unto thee quickly, you're not going to realize it, and I'm going to remove your candlestick, and that, I believe that that means that they're not going to be put in that place that God has prepared for them, which could be the New Jerusalem, or, well, it sounds like it's someplace actually on the earth, because the earth follow, swallows up the flood and helps the woman. So, um, God's going to put those who are worthy someplace on the earth and protect them, and it says they shall feed with them. That the angels feeding us, uh, you know, Elijah the prophet went to the wilderness for uh, about a year, and the ravens fed him. They brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. Okay? And then Elijah was raptured to heaven and he didn't die. That I believe that that is a picture of the end times of what's going to happen to the ones who are worthy. We're going to go someplace in the wilderness and God is going to supernaturally feed us. For three and a half years. But the devil is going to try to come after us. But then the earth is going to help us. And apparently there's going to be a big earthquake or something. And it's going to swallow up those people and kill them. So that they can't harm us. God is going to supernaturally take care of us. During that time if we're worthy. Um, and I really hope I'm worthy. I walk and pray every day. To make sure that. Try to make sure that I am worthy to escape. If I end up not being worthy. Then I will just hope and pray that and try to walk hard enough to where I at least make it to heaven um and uh so you've got the it sounds like even the church so if you leave your first love if you are so busy serving Christ that you are not making you're putting the service before him and a lot of Christians have this problem I've had this problem in the past and you have to make sure you keep your priorities straight. I mean, it is strict. It is strict. It is a it is strict, and it is a lot of work to escape the tribulation. This is no joke. This is not a game. Okay, this could be coming up on us in the next month. The it's time. It could be time, and you know you don't want to be in trouble, so you need to really. You know, pray, do what Jesus said, watch and pray. Pray and beg God to make you worthy to escape, to show you what you need to clean up in your life and to help you to be obedient so that you can escape the tribulation, okay? And um, then in uh, another church age, it says in verse in Revelation 2, 8, it speaks unto the church in Smyrna says, And unto the church, angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say that they are Jews and are not, but all the synagogue of Satan. Feel none of those things, 
which thou shalt suffer, behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Okay? And then in verse 11 it says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. So the church in Smyrna, they're not condemned. But remember that, you know, you've got people who totally, uh, you know, when they make their profession of faith, they totally surrender to Christ. 100%, they've completely repented of those sins, they completely surrender to Christ, they completely commit to obeying Him, and they are indwelled with the Holy Spirit and sealed, and they are sealed until the day of redemption, they, they can't lose their salvation, and, and they can't do like really evil sins like murder, and they can't fall away. Then you have those who, well, their doctrine is pure, they believe salvation, right? They're not involved with Rome. But they've held something back. They didn't fully commit. They didn't fully surrender. They're not indwelt. They're not sealed. They're, and they are the ones who have to endure to the end. And then they are saved. And so God puts them through a tribulation to where they have to die for him. And he says if they are faithful unto death, he will give them the crown of life. And, if, and who can, overcomes will not be heard of the second death. Well, anyone that's heard of the second death is lost. So this is a lost church. This is a lost church. They think they're saved and they're trying to serve God, but they're not 100% dead. They're not 100% committed. They're not 100% uh, submitted to Christ. So he didn't save them. They're not, they're not truly saved yet. And you do have uh, in Revelation... Chapter 5, you have, and I believe it is the Church of Smyrna. You have these people who um, are killed for their faith. Oh, it was the fifth still. Let's see if it was in... Uh, let's see. Seven seals. Um... If it was the fifth seal. So, we'll find the fifth seal here. Okay. Revelation 6, 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest a, a yet a little yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Okay? And so these people are under the altar, so these people are a little different. They're not just in heaven like everybody else, they're actually under the altar. They're asking God to give revenge, which, you know, in the age of grace we're not allowed to do that. But I guess we are in the, they will be in the tribulation. Um, because it is the time of God's wrath. So, well, and then you have the prophecies, um, uh, where the two witnesses would actually call down plagues and stuff. Um, you know, so you have that. Uh, so in the tribulation, some things change, um, to where then Christians can command destructions and Christians can ask for God ask for revenge they can pray for revenge so um, that's that's a change there and uh, then if you go over you get, now remember these are under the altar they have died for Christ it says if you're faithful to death you know you shall be saved that means they're saved after death um, and if you go on over I think is it 17? Let's see. Or well, 7. Yeah. If you go to chapter 7, it says here in verse 14, or in verse, um, so these, uh, these are those who are saved in the tribulation. They will not they were they they got saved through the tribulation. They died for Christ in the tribulation. 
Um, and in seven Revelation seven fourteen is uh thirteen it says, And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest, and he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither shall Neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So these are people who were not truly saved, or they were not right with God, and they make their roles white in the blood of the Lamb. Then after they die, Jesus leads them to living fountains fountains of water which that would be salvation and remember the bible says he that endureth to the end shall be saved so something if they don't get if something's messed up in their lives and they don't get indwelled by and sealed by the holy spirit but they are faithful to death then they go to heaven and they're saved after death and it's right there and um and which goes completely against what I was taught as a Baptist. So if any Baptists are listening, they've done turned me off and said I was a heretic. I am reading exactly what the Bible says. So if they have a problem with it, they can take it up with God. And, I, you know, I personally worry about a lot of those Baptists that they're going to be going through that tribulation. It really concerns me. It really concerns me that they're going to be going through the tribulation. And I am very concerned that many of them are going to completely fall away and hate God and curse God. And not repent. They're going to be the ones doing that in the Great Tribulation. Because they're convinced that, well, I believe in Jesus. So, I'm supposed to be okay. I'm supposed to be worthy of everything. Because I believe in Jesus. I believe the facts about Jesus said a prayer. I ask God to forgive me. So, I'm supposed to just get everything. Uh, no, that's not in the Bible. It's not there. You've got here. I've just shown... You know, all these churches going through the tribulation. Jesus said, watch and pray that you may be kind of worthy to escape. He didn't say, assess me as your Savior and believe in me. And believe the facts about me and ask me to forgive your sins every night so that you can escape. He said, watch and pray. He said uh, that these people go through the tribulation to make their robes right. If your robes aren't right, if you're not pure, you're not getting in. And just being saved does not get you does not mean that your robes, your garments are white. Okay? You're going, if you're not pure, you're going through the tribulation. And it could be happening in a month. Um, and then you have, uh, did I do Saldus? Okay, let me go, uh, I, yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't do Saldus. So then you have Saldus, Revelation 3, 1 through 4. And we will look at that one. Um, let's see. Saw this. Okay. Three. There it is. Uh, and unto the angel of the church and saw this right. These things says he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works. Thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Well, wait a minute. If they're dead, I think that means they're lost. Uh, because you can't be saved and be dead. They have a name. They call themselves Christians, but they not. Okay? They have a name, but they're dead. Okay? Remember, faith without works is dead. So, they're the ones who are like, I believe in Jesus, but then they go commit adultery, get drunk, and they're not serious about God. They go to church every once in a while. They, you know, uh, yeah, they're dead. Okay, this is they don't do anything for God. They're, they just they just give God lip service, and that's it. Um, it says, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent, if therefore thou shalt not watch. Remember, Jesus told his disciples, Watch and pray that ye be counted worthy to escape. Watch and pray. It says, If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. 
And then it says, Thou hast a few names, even insulters, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Christians can defile their garments. Okay? Those who have not defiled their garments are worthy. And they will walk before God and before Christ in white robes. Okay? He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Okay? So these people... You know, they can, um, these people, you know, if they're not watching and if they're dead, they're not living for Christ, they're just giving them lip service, they're going through the tribulation. Okay? Um, and, uh, then it says, then you have Philadelphia. Philadelphia is the only church age. That is promised to escape the great tribulation. Look at Revelations three four uh, three. Um, what was that? Let's see Philadelphia three seven three eleven. Okay, Revelation three seven three eleven. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write: These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David. He that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say that they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. It says right there, that is the only church that God says, I will keep you from that hour of temptation. I believe that the church of Philadelphia is the woman who flees into the wilderness for three and a half years during the worst part. Because if you look at the wrath, the last three and a half years we were talking about all the wrath of God falling on the earth. Only one third of the earth is destroyed. What happens to the... Why does he only destroy one third of the earth and not the other two thirds? Well, because those Christians who are willing to escape living somewhere in that other two thirds part, and he's trying to make sure that the tribulation doesn't even get close to them. They're fully protected. Okay? Now, yes, the devil tries to send send an army after him to take them, but then the earth does a huge earthquake and the earth swallows up the army and they're, they're protected. Um... So, that's what it looks like it is from these scriptures. Um, the whole, you know, pre-trip rapture theory and all that stuff. I, that stuff, if you look at scriptures, it's not in there. Um, and, you know, just because you're saved, does just because you name the name of Christ and you pray to prayer doesn't mean you're missing. Because, I mean... I do believe the actual saved here, a lot of these people are people who aren't totally saved, but then in that in Thyatira it says those who commit adultery. Well, if they're committing adultery, then they're truly saved. Because you have to, you can't, because someone who's not truly saved would not be part of the bride. I mean, if they're committing adultery, it looks like they'd have to be truly saved, but they have gotten mixed up in bell worship and in idolatry, and God's like, I can't you, I can't take you like that. You have to be purified. And you're going to go. He actually says that all who commit adultery with uh, Jezebel will be thrown into the great tribulation. And then it says that all the churches shall know. Well, that means that the whole that all the churches are still going to be on the earth. So even Philadelphia will still be on the earth. 
but it, the Philadelphia would be protected. Because it even says that the, that the dragon throws a flood after the woman, but the earth opens her mouth and helps her. So, somehow, God is going to protect those who are worthy through the tribulation. He's going to protect them through it. Um, you know, those, you have the prophecy of Isaiah 24, where the earth turns upside down and is shaken and broken up. And, you know, God has told us before that a destruction would happen, we would be put on a island and would be protected and hidden. I think he was trying to tell us that we'd be protected and hidden throughout the tribulation, but yet we would have internet and we would be able to preach and the world would be able to hear us because in Philadelphia it says, I have set before thee an open door that no man can shut. Well, why can't they shut it? Because they don't know where we're at and they can't find our IP address because God keeps changing it. But yet we're preaching on YouTube because in one passage it says that they would hear us singing from the aisles and they would say, my leanness, my leanness. Well, how are they hearing us singing from the aisles if we don't have YouTube? Sounds like YouTube to me. Internet and YouTube. So the church is going to, the ones who are worthy are going to be put into safety and they're going to be able to preach. No one can shut that door. They're going to be able to preach because they're not going to be able to find us and what they are going to find. You know, the devil is going to send a flood after us. So they are going to figure out where we're at and they're going to come after us. But then there's going to be a huge earth, another earthquake and they're going to all be swallowed up by the earth. And stopped, and God's not going to let anyone get near us to harm us. That is what happens. So you have got to make sure that you are right with God. Be watching and praying and making sure that you are pure or you are going to go through the tribulation even if you are saved. You're going to be purified in it. He's not going to take an impure bride. It's not happening. So that's very important to know that, and I'm going to go ahead and end there today. Um, and uh, and I've been hearing that a lot more Christians are coming, are moving away from the old teachings of the rapture and stuff that I was raised with, and a lot more of them are moving into more of these kinds of beliefs where it's going to happen some other way. It's going to, you know, some Christians are going to be purified in tribulation. Others are going to, I've actually been hearing this coming out. I'm not just, this didn't just come from me. Um, I've been hearing this coming up from other people. I mean, uh, you know, God's been telling us stuff for years uh, that he would put us on our island and protect us. And and uh, there would be other Christians there. And he said that the angels would come and take care of us and help us. And I was having trouble. I thought maybe they were metaphors. We were try, trying to figure this out, but I'm thinking that because it says they shall feed her there. Well, who's the they? The angels? It's probably the angels. It sounds to me like we're going to eat manna or something. Um, but it does sound like that we do stay on the earth. So, because some people kind of think that, well, maybe we're just going to be raptured to the New Jerusalem. But if we're raptured to the New Jerusalem, because it said that the woman was given two wings of a great eagle to fly. So, like, well, maybe we're going to be raptured to the New Jerusalem because it's going to hover above the ground. Well, if we're going to be raptured in New Jerusalem, how will the devil send a flood after us? And then the earth help us and swallow up the flood. That that don't make any sense. I, I believe it's going to be someplace on the earth, and we are going to have electricity. We're going to have internet uh, because we're going to be able to preach. Um, because uh, there's that verse in the Old Testament that says that during that after that great that terrible destruction, which I believe now is probably God's wrath. Um, it's part of the tribulation. It's part of God's wrath. Um, you know, we're going to be preaching, and they're not, and they're going to be like, uh, "My leanness, my leanness," and they're, they're not going to know how to get to us. And but they're going to hear us preaching, and that's going to drive the beast nuts because you know he's trying to kill all these Christians and do all this stuff, but he can't touch us and he can't figure out where we're at. And then he tries to send an army. He does figure it out, and he sends an army after us, and there's an earthquake that happens that destroys the army so um that it, biblically that sounds like what is going to actually happen all of these other things you know it's not it's not actually in the bible that it happens that way um so uh you know when i when you go through the bible it actually shows that churches are still on the earth they go through the tribulation it shows that some are protected through the tribulation. 
You have to look at the wrath that only one third of the earth is destroyed. If the church was no longer here, why would he not touch the other two thirds of the earth? That doesn't even make sense. Why wouldn't he destroy the whole earth during the tribulation? Why would he only destroy one third of it? That doesn't even make sense. So, um, you know, so yes, I believe that the church will be here through the uh, tribulation. Those who are worthy will escape it somehow. Uh, I believe that will be put someplace on the earth um, to be uh, taken care of. And see, God told us 14 years ago in the beginning when he first started showing us all this stuff. He said that the angels would come and take us someplace into deep hiding for a time and then we would come back and we didn't understand it so you know this thing of where Jesus comes back and there's a trumpet blow and we disappear that's not because even in the Bible it says that he sends his angels to gather his elect um, so it sounds like that those who are worthy the angels will be sent to them and, and God also told us when the angels show up to take you, go with them, nothing doubting. So I think a lot of Christians are going to be like, oh no, I'm not going to, you can't be an angel. Uh, it's not supposed to happen this way. You're supposed to blow a trumpet. I'm supposed to just disappear. Um, it sounds like the angels are actually going to come to us and be like, hey, it's time to go. You have to come with us to escape the tribulation. We're going to take you someplace to keep you safe. And then you know, um, I'm, I'm afraid that some Christians, you know, uh, you know, if it's a choice, because it says, Jesus said, um, you know, uh, in the one passage, don't look back, remember lost wife, you know, so is, uh, is some, is it going to be like a choice whether we go or not? And, uh, and I'm afraid that some Christians are going to decide not to go. And so they're going to suffer through the tribulation. Uh, I'm going, I'm not, I'm not standing behind for nobody. Um, nobody or nothing. I'm going. I don't want to go through the tribulation. I'm, they, they come from me. I'm going. Um, so, you know, that, it sounds like it can happen a lot different from what we were taught. So just be ready for it. Just be prayed up and just really pray and be prayed up and, um, you know, uh, watch and make sure you're pure and right and trust God. And um, be ready for whatever happens. Um, and uh, so that's the end of it today. But, you know, you're not going to escape the tribulation just because you believe in Jesus. Just because you believe the facts about Jesus and pray to prayer. That, that's not going to get you out of the tribulation. Um, so, you know, it, it is work. There is a work. It's not... Okay, when it says, uh, we're not saved by works of righteousness, but by His mercy He saved, or by His grace He saved us. God doesn't owe us salvation. We're not so righteous that God owes us salvation. Okay? That's what that's saying. We're not saved by works, because if we were saved by works, then God would owe it to us. God doesn't owe us salvation. We still fall short. We still sin. We still mess up. Uh, what He's looking for is faithfulness and trying and... You know, total dedication. Um, so he doesn't owe it to us. And it's not the, uh, when it says that we're not saved by the works of the law, that's the ceremonial works. We're not saved through the ceremonial works of the law, of the sacrifice and the diet and all that. Um, but it takes work. I mean, we, we prove ourselves by our works. Like James said, you know, your faith is shown by your works. Faith without works is dead. And we know what happens to dead Christians. They go through the tribulation. That one church that said they were dead. And it said that the God would come upon them with a thief, as a thief. And uh, they would they would be, you know, that they, they would not know it. They would not know the hour. And remember... If you are not watching, if you're not praying, if it comes upon you as a thief and you don't know the hour, then you're left. Okay? Now that hour means time. It doesn't mean Pacific hour, like 1 o'clock or 
mid or twelve o'clock in the morning or something. You know, it it means if you're not watching, if you're not playing, if you're not saying, "Oh my goodness," they they are confirming a covenant in a few weeks. We better be watching. We better be playing. We better make sure we're right with God because this could be it. And if this is it, you know, we're going to be in trouble if we're not ready to go. Make sure you're ready to go. Okay? And so um, that's my point today. But we'll go ahead and close. And um, uh We'll go ahead and close in prayer, and then I'll do the ironic blessing over you. Um, and let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for your word and all your blessings. Help us have a good day and day. Help us people will understand this. And, and everybody will be right with you and ready to go uh, when you come to uh, take us to protect us from the tribulation. Pray that we will all be kind of worthy to escape the tribulation. And I pray that we will be ready to go and we'll go, uh, whether it's to some place on the earth to be protected or raptured to heaven. And thank you, Lord, in Christ Jesus' name, I will am. Amen. And I'll go ahead and pray the blessing over you. And Yavarakaka Adonai, Vayesh, Meraka, Yahel, Adonai, Panav, Aleka, Viku, Neka, Yisa, Adonai, Panav, Aleka, Vesem, Laka, Shalom. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Thank you so much for watching this week. And I hope you'll come back next week for another uh, Bible study. And uh, if uh, God lays it on your heart to support our ministry so that we can have more resources to reach more people uh, for Christ, please use the Patreon or PayPal links in the description. And thank you for everyone that likes the videos and shows them and uh, comments that helps our channel and we're reaching more and more people um and uh so thank you and i hope you have a wonderful day and god bless you bye